This is actually page 122, number 2 in your textbook. Page 122, number 2. It's our second thing of herbs. And then we had a mixture, right? Tell me about the first one they described to us. What's the amount of the first one? How many ounces? 30. Okay. I'm, not, I'm actually going to put up by amount the ounces. That way I don't have to keep writing it. You can put it in there if you want, but I decided to keep it cleaner this time. Um, the cost, how much is it? $2. So I'll put dollars up here. So this, everything I put in this column is going to be in dollars. Okay, so that means the value of this is how much? 30 times 2, how much does this thing cost? Okay, so it costs $60. The second pack of um, the herbs, how many ounces costing $1 per ounce should be mi mixed? So do we know the amount or the cost of this second bag? The cost. What's the cost? $1 per ounce. So we don't know the amount. What shall I put in that section? Okay. Symbolize for me then that value. When I multiply across, what do I get over here on the right? Okay. The mixture. So to get the mixture, guys, remember what you do is you take the information you have and you kind of get it from these columns you've got. Because remember, you're adding down. So the amount of mix, what is it? The cost, okay, um, I think it probably tells us. What's it want the cost to be? So 1.6 or 1.60? And then over here, what's the value? So I'm still going to work across the row first, filling in all the information. What's the combination of these going to give me? Okay. And the last thing I do is I add. I use that same relationship going down that we saw a second ago. That's the very last thing. So now I say 60 plus X is equal to 1.6 times 30 plus X. Yes. Repeat the question. You could say it the other way. To me, when I distribute, I like to distribute from the left hand side. But it's the same thing. If I put 1.6 over here, when I multiply it, I just say 1.6 times this, 1.6 times this. Because you just distribute backwards. Because that's basically when we're using the table, we're always going to have that kind of strategy in mind at the end. We're always going to say that one and that one. So the top two together are going to give me equal to this result. And this right here represents the result that we wanted. Good question. Very good question. So now I'm going to distribute all this. What do you guys get when you distribute it? What's 1.6 times 30? Okay. Now what? I'm going to move one of my X's. I'm going to choose to move this X over because it's the smallest. I'll go this way and say minus X. Doesn't matter. If you, if you did it the other way, who cares? You'll get the same answer. In fact, it's probably good to practice doing stuff different from me sometimes to make sure that you're confident doing it yourself.
Pot să fie final furie. And x is equal to. So the answer is, is that that's like the amount of the second herb. So 20 ounces is the answer. Kelly would be happy that we put our little units on there. The amount of the herb bag too. This. Now that you saw one similar, but not the exact same, because I, I feel like even though I thought the lecture would be faster, I think you need the full time. I'm going to keep letting you practice the same kind until I can see everybody's really getting it. So this is very important. So let me paste my little template in here. I'll erase all this stuff. I'm not lucky that I get to do this. I should have made a prettier template, though. In the fifth edition textbook, the next example will come from page 122, number 4. That's page 122 in your textbook, number 4. In number 3, it's a little bit different. That's why I chose it. So the X will be in a different place, but your strategy will be the exact same, okay? You'll see as you fill in the table. And let's see, I'll tell you what, what you're putting in the table. Let's see, we have... We have a meat plus mixture this time. We have a turkey mixture. Wait a second. We had a beef. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We had a beef. We had a turkey. And the mix. That was the meatloaf. Let's see, three pounds. And how much did it cost? I know I'm putting you in a second there. It was driving me nuts again. Okay, so the value of this beef is how much? A dollar ninety nine times three. What do I get? So $5.97. Okay. The turkey. How many pounds of turkey do we have? Or do we know? So we have one pound of turkey. And uh, what's the cost? Wait a second. I guess we're actually okay. Never mind. We're still fine. Okay. So it's one thirty nine. I had to make sure it sounds it's easy to put the wrong data in the wrong place because once you get it in there, it all works out for you. What's the cost of this turkey? 139. Now for this mixture. How many pounds is the mixture? All the four pounds. Good. Okay, the cost. X. That's what they've asked us to find. And uh, for the value. Okay, four times x is equal to what? Oh, sorry, so sorry, I'm sorry. So four times x is the value. Now what do we do to get our final equation? Okay, you go down it. So we'll say 597 plus 139 equals x. Oh, equals 4x. I'm going to write the problem wrong. That would make a big mess. Okay, so on the left, what do the uh, numbers add up to be? And then when you divide that by 4, what do you get? Sounds good. Let 
nice. Are you guys seeing the pattern? So they'll, they will actually all be consistently like that. The only tricky part is going to be where to put that X. Mm -hmm. And actually, you saw me, I don't know if you saw that, I almost got confused because I didn't, I wasn't sure to put the X down there when I was reading it. That's the hardest part. Um, the only like twist that he's on the scroll. What's up? So what we always do is once the whole table is filled in. So see how to fill the table, we're putting in these two pieces for every single type, putting in the amount and the cost. To get this column, we're saying like that one times that one equals this one. That one times that one equals you know going across, right? So once it's all filled in, you come over to the very right hand side one and you say. This one plus this one is always equal to this one going down. And this right here gives you that final equation every single time. Let me highlight it again, too. What is that? In the fifth edition uh, textbook that you okay, have, good. this next example is on page 122, number 20. This is, again, page 122 of your textbook, okay, we number 20. Ounces. And the percentage is 20. So once again, move that decimal, multiply, what do we get? Really? Look at that. By the percent concentration of the resulting uh, gold alloy. And our amount is what? Okay. So we have 100 ounces. We don't know our, our percent, so I'll say X percent. That means our value was 100x. And of course, when you have a percent in there on that x, remember at the end, just like in those old problems, that means you'll probably have to go back and take care of the percent, right? I suspect. I'm, I'll, I'm going to make sure. Yeah. You never tend to add that column because the price of the total thing. Can't, it's not as simple as just adding the amount. It's always going to be related between how all this stuff kind of goes. So usually you're adding this one, adding this one, and a lot of times this one is just completely independent. Yeah. That's a good question. I, know I can see how that would be kind of tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. to verify about that percent thing at the end. I guess we'll see for sure. Okay, so we've got our stuff building. Give me the formula. Oh, was this 0.12 on this? Is that what this were? 30% of 40 was 0.12? Was it 0.12 or 12? Okay. Sorry, I just wanted to make sure. Okay, so we have 12 plus 12, right, is equal to 100x. So we're getting 24 equals 100x. Divide by 100, what are we getting? 0.24 yeah. equals x. Now to make that a percent, because remember, up here in this problem, we wanted a percent. To make that happen, what do I have to do to make that 0.24? Multiply by 100%, also known as move your decimal two places to the right. So once again, we took this column. We said 12 plus 12 is equal to 100x. Combine stuff, get x by itself. But in this one, since the percent was written beside a letter, just like those percent problems we learned a couple sections ago, we deal with that percent at the very end. We say, okay, we knew x had to be a percent, so move that decimal two places. Same as multiplying by 100. The only time you have to adjust your answer like that is if the percent is in parentheses. That's something consistent we've seen here, so be really careful. You don't have to do any kind of moving unless there's a percent that's supposed to be on your answer. Let's take a 10-minute break, and after the break, I'm going to show you um, some that are almost exactly alike, but I'll do one or two just to make sure and you guys can have lab. So 10-minute break. Problem, so where things are moving. In this kind of problem, we also use tables. 
Oh, we just use a different.